Welcome to part two. This time we're going to see how to make our little spaceship move back and forth. Let's check it out. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is our little spaceship's animation moves across half a character at a time rather than a full character on the screen. The reason I do that, it makes the animation a bit smoother. So I've put this little at symbol there as a point of reference. So that's the size of a character. Now if we move our little spaceship across, see it's only gone half across that character. Let's move it again. So one character, two movements of the spaceship. So that gives a slightly smoother animation when it comes to moving our spaceship. So that's going to be a key part of what I'm going to be showing today. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at the code. So the first thing we need to do is capture some inputs, uh, whether it be keyboard or joystick. So let's let's have a look at that. So line 300, K is for keyboard, and we peak 197 to see what character is currently being pressed, and J is for joystick, and we peak 56320 to grab that. So if now this is where we're looking at the individual bits set on 56 three two zero the different bits represent the different buttons pressed on the joystick and if there's zero that means that the button's been pressed so if it's this I think that's a third bit across and then we're going to move our ship to the left and the eighth oh sorry fourth bit but using the AND date now we won't go into that too much detail that's just uh, how you interrogate for the joystick and then we, we move right so these two represent the left and right and the keyboard I'm just using the characters Z and X. That would be Z and that would be X. And that moves, that then sets the ship direction to 1 and 2. 1 being right, 2 being left. Now you'd probably think that minus 1 would be more logical for left, but um, to optimize this for the compiler, what I've done, I've just kept it to a uh, byte um, value, so anything from 0 to 255 is what I'm limiting all variables to. Uh, it makes the compiler go a bit quicker. So, and the SX value is the ship's X position. So if we want to move left, we want to make sure it's greater than 1, otherwise we run off the edge of the screen. And if we want to move right, we want to make sure it's less than 38, so we don't run off the screen on the other side. So that's what that's checking. And then we just simply set this variable ship's direction. And if it hasn't been set, we just jump to 420. Again, I could have used if it's greater than 0, then go sub 550. But I try and keep the if statements as absolutely simple as possible, again, for the compiler. So equals 0 is something very efficient for the compiler to uh, compile. So if we uh, don't move the ship, it just jumps to 520. So, which means on this line, what we're doing is we go something to 550 which is the actual section of the code that will move the ship for us and then we set the ship's direction back to zero otherwise we'll just keep going in that direction so 550 this is where the ship's animation starts if it's one which is moving to the right uh, we're going to work out this location and, and uh, which I've set by SL and if it's going to the left then it'll be this line Again, it's weird looking code, but it's all designed around efficiency for the compiler. So, um, what we're looking at for in this position is a screen location. And if we look at VM, that's a video memory, which is 1024, plus 40 times 23. Now, that's 40 columns across on the screen and 23 uh, rows down. That's what that multiplication is there for. So, that puts us right on the uh, uh, beginning of the, the second line from the bottom and then we add in the ship's X position which takes us across the screen and then we add 2 to it because what we're going to be doing now is interrogating to see if our spaceship is going to collide with any bombs that have been dropped. Now that part of the code hasn't been written yet but this is um, I'm just setting that up uh, in preparation. So if we're moving to the right it's going to set a location that's uh, a couple of characters ahead of the direction it's moving if we're moving to the left, it's the same thing. This time, rather than plus, we're going minus 2. That's taking us to the left of the ship, and we're just having a look. So basically, that means if we're moving right, 
we're going to be interrogating these two characters to see if there's anything there that we're colliding into. Obviously if we collide into something we blow up. And so that's what we're checking here. And if it's 32 or 96 it means it's blank. There's nothing there. We're not going to collide. That means we just go to the next section of the code. Here we're looking at that location and we're adding 40 to it. So this was the second line from the bottom and this is actually the, the bottom line. Again, if there's nothing there, we continue on. Now this code that I've rimmed out is what's going to happen if you when you coll uh, collide into something and we cause the ship to explode. That uh, hasn't really been uh, covered yet, so we're just rimming that line out. So now what we're going to be doing is, this is where it might get a little bit confusing, I've used this uh, FA character uh, variable uh, 71 and 72 that's the graphic uh, screen code for the missile that's fired so the missile whether it's in this position or half a character left or right the actual missile the character for it will be different otherwise it'll look like it's not firing directly from the uh, the pointy bit of your spaceship so I'm using that to track the animation whether we're in um, which of the two positions within the character that's what I started off by demonstrating whether we're in this one or half a character to the left so what we use that's why we use the FA um, for that so if if it's 71 then we go to 72 which is we're going to move the animation sorry we're going to change the graphics without actually moving to the next character if it is 72 then we set it back to 71 and we start again but we increment the actual character position so the ship's X location is incremented by one and then we go down to the section which actually draws the the spaceship and the same going the other way so if SD which means we're going left we go to 605 we do that code but if we're going right obviously SD equals doesn't equal 2 is equal 1 and we process these two lines which is again with the uh, X position increasing, X position decreasing, but also toggling between the two animations. So now let's actually draw the uh, draw our spaceships. Now, which one of these? Okay, the six ten. This section here will be the um, uh, to the left of the character in that character space, and this one is to the to the right. Uh, sorry, that section here. So what we're doing, uh, video memory plus 40 times 23, that takes us down to the second from the bottom again, that same sort of thing. And then we go minus 2, we put a space there, so if we're moving left or right, it doesn't matter. What we're going to be doing is clearing um, behind us, so we don't leave a trail of spaceship dragging behind. And then these characters, uh, uh, let's bring it up here. So SX minus 1 up here, that's going to be this character. Then we draw this character, then this character. Then we go down to 40 minus 24, which is the, the bottom line. And minus 2, again, we clear out this character. We draw these three characters and we clear this character again. So left or right, we clear these either side to make sure we don't leave a, a trail of uh, spaceship behind us. Okay, so we've got the uh, the image drawn and now we go down to this section where we just set the color we're using color 15 so we um, just uh, use color memory at starting location for color memory 40 plus 23 again the same maths as I'm using up here and um, yeah that basically draws a spaceship now this poke I've just added in for the sake of the demo that is simply this character and that's basically it. That's how we move our little spaceship back and forth. It'll return back to uh, the this go sub here where we move the ship and it'll continue through the main loop. Okay, hopefully that's been helpful. Next time I think we might start uh, shooting missiles and dropping bombs. See what that looks like. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, like, all that. Thank you very much.